Well, it's still Nigeria Decides, and if you are joining us, we're live from our Lagos studios. We're still talking about, of course, the biggest story, which is trending, I'm mm. sure, right now on Twitter. Uh, Nigeria Decides postponed. Exactly. <laughs> and joining us to also do more justice, whether to postpone now or later in the election, and how that is playing out. We have our guest with us, Ihe Chuku Ibeji, a political analyst. Good morning. Uh, Najib Bello, good morning as well, political good analyst morning. in the studio. How yeah. did you receive the news today wow i it was saddening but um i i stayed awake to to hear the INEC chairman and i didn't know why the delay was so long before they made the announcement but it was, it's sad because there are people who have moved all around the country trying to vote and it's unfortunate i don't know how how this ended up being like this they had all the time mm. and they failed to plan properly yeah, yeah. it was just disappointing it's disappointing because we've had six or six elections in this nation and you have four years to plan for this particular one and you get to this point and you're saying oh logistics come on logistics at this time i mean from the pr perspective you should have even come up with a better reason i would think i mean you could tell me security like last time and i would look at that a bit even though that is not an excuse because four years is long enough is a long enough time for you to plan and hey by Thursday you did not know Friday, you didn't have a sense because you're, you're distributing these, these things, these materials around, and you didn't have that sense that this was going to happen. I mean, the, the, um, the, the effect on the economy, too, is another issue for me because, I mean, we all work or we all have our own businesses that we're doing. So you can imagine what it is for a business in an economy that is, um, that is strategic. I don't want to use any other words. You, know, you can imagine the effect of this shutdown on that on that on that business or that work. Mm. So it's 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 a bit just disappointing, quite frankly. And we will now cross over to Abuja, where we have our correspondent Amadin Uyi on standby. Hello, Amadin. Good morning. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll mm. reconnect with Amadin. We're having some uh, network issues. We will get back to Amadin because mm. we need to find out what's going on in Abuja and what's exactly, to feel. Exactly. But, but, but you um, mentioned something, Ihe Chiku, about businesses and economies. Because a lot of people who own businesses, let's take Lagos as uh, an example, who have traveled to, let's say, Anambra, Eboi, you know, or even neighboring Ogun State, those businesses are going to be shut down until they can make their way back. Now, they have lost money because this election is being postponed and they will still have to do the same pilgrim's journey back to where they have to vote. So, of course, monies are going to be lost. Of course, if they were still in this city, they would just walk down to their shops and open up and, you know, there's nothing yeah. lost. So, how do we even remedy this? Because you seem very unsatisfied with the reasons or the excuses that INEC has given. And how do you think that this will reflect on every uh, the average Nigerian who's a business person? I think that the business person uh, who has traveled out of the state or who has engaged himself to be, because they say that it is where you register that you vote, uh, who has put himself in a place, maybe in a hotel, or gone to a friend's house to hold up and left the business, uh, is going to have to take a bit of time to come back. Why I say that is because if for a day you had said that you're going to make 100,000 Naira in your business, and you spent a hundred thousand naira going to vote, you need to make it back up. And so, just like news agencies as well, we have our reporters yes. spread across yeah. the country and Absolutely. what's course, next? Uh, Wait till next week. Mm -hmm. So it's one of two things and I come back to my business and I've lost a hundred thousand naira. It's a loss in my P and L. So I'm saying to myself, which product or which good do I top up the price a bit on? And this is just from one perspective. Mm. There are so many other perspectives. As an economy, so many uh, on Friday, a lot of offices closed by 1, 1 p.m., some mm. closed 12, all right? Uh, as at yesterday night, um, in, in, in certain areas in, in um, Surulere, right, uh, there, were, there were reports of tension, high tension, and, you know, some businesses, some, some joints, you know, we actually they slow down on their yes. business. Okay, so those, are, those are some of the constitutive now, we have been told that our uh, correspondent in Abuja is now there. Hello, Amadine. Good morning. Hello, Amadeen. Can you hear us? Okay, it's good to have you join us, Amadeen. Now, you obviously are aware of the situation, uh, you know, by INEC, the announcement of the postponement. How are people in Abuja taking this breaking story off, obviously? Okay, first of all, I've gone through several areas that were expected to be voting centers and not voting uh, What I've observed is that those areas 
are definitely in state and they are not only the agents. But I root to those areas and observe that I feel some security operations, uh, soldiers, not police, are different than doctors along the uh, along my roots to the police center. They were definitely careful in case security, but I felt that they were not informed that the elections have been postponed, so they resumed a very early at their designated spot. Sorry, Amadine, just hold on. Let's, let's, let's just get something clear. Did you say that even the police officers didn't get a signal that these elections have been cancelled? I didn't speak police. I said soldiers. Soldiers? Of the head of the Nigerian army. I saw them at various junctions. They are not usual because they are not usually. So I said that those were the assigned positions to ensure that there is adequate uh, security during the post. And I'm I believe. In mm. at different junctions. Mm. I but believe. I spoke to several Nigerians on the street and they are really, really insane. They are very insane that their nations have been postponed. They say some of them they came out very early to cast their votes. And some of them say they are worried about their friends and colleagues who have traveled out of Abuja to their various states. Some of them are taking permission from their places of work and believing that they will vote and later money they will be back. But that they will be forced to spend about the week their uh, abilities or where they went to vote. And I don't know where for their finances because a lot of them will be stronger. But most of those I spoke to on the streets of Abuja are very, very intense. Some are putting the blame on INEC, others are putting the blame on the HPC, some are even putting the blame on the Zemohan Wari. But across the board, you are definitely not happy. Now, we understand they are definitely not happy, but how is the mood there? Is it calm? Is it cool? Is the temperature just low as expected would have been if we were having the elections to be held today? Yes, the girls are trying to resume their normal Saturday duties. A lot of them said that they felt that they were not going to work with them, but they had to be forced to go out. The mood is very, very calm. I haven't seen any sign of violence, but the people still say they are disappointed. Mm. I don't seen any kind of violence. I would also like to pick your brains as well. Do you think from their reaction, this would also have an increased level of voter apathy come next week, Saturday? Increased level of vote, pardon? Voter apathy, in other words, could this dampen the morale of these mm. voters and they might not necessarily come out en masse next week when the elections have, have been rescheduled? No, I, I, I think the election for Nigerians they are sold out to the election. None of them have indicated the interest they will not be casting their votes. And I don't think this postponement will affect, uh, will cause voter apathy or stop them from coming out to cast their votes. It's only that the uh, financial implications of those that have traveled will be great. But most of those that have spoken to who said that they are ready to vote, they still will come out next week to cast their votes. Mm. The now, the FCT now, have they received um, their own materials as well? Because we know it's in Niger, Taraba states, where some of the states that were identified having glitches with the distribution of the sensitive and non-sensitive materials. Has Abuja, the FCT, gotten its stock yet? I didn't get that clear. Okay, so he's saying that um, certain states were yet to receive materials for the elections. Has the FCT taken receipt of their election materials? No, for the FCT, there is no problem. If you remember that I next said that they were postponing the election for logistic challenges. Uh, recall that states like Niger, the resident electoral commissioner, complained that he had not received materials. We had uh, issues of several high-tech offices being, being bombed by fire. But for the FCT, I don't think they have that problem because most of the materials are being placed from the capital. In the past elections, FCT has clearly not had that challenge of not having materials available for the election. But the problem is for this, which have complained before now that they did not get materials still right now and other states like Kano and other Mm. All right. Thank you very much, Amadine. We will keep coming back to you every now and again to find out what's happening in Abuja, if there be any, mm. you know, developing stories.
Most definitely. Now, gentlemen, we had our correspondents there in Abuja bringing us the look and feel and the polls of yeah. the citizens there. And not so many people were impressed. And he also talked about the fact that um, how this would also affect business as well. But going forward, what level of communication do you expect from INEC now when it comes to updates? Because there has just been this unnecessary built culture of silence from some of these agencies and INEC now comes under focus. Your announcement comes late. You have not yet released the number of PVCs collected. You haven't given any updates as to the number of states that have gotten all of the complete materials. What level of expectation do you have from INEC now feeding information back to back? You see, based on just this postponement, INEC communicates very poorly. As at the late hours of yesterday, news was already breaking that they, they are postponing the elections. And I got reports from some sources. But INEC, when, I, when we tuned in and tried to reach INEC, if you call them also, they'll tell you the elections are holding. At that point, it was already getting clear to some people that elections were going to be postponed. Mm. And INEC is the source of that information. So I didn't understand how come people were being told that, no, there's no problem, we're going to have elections. And at some point, when they reached a decision, they were telling journalists that uh, they've reached a decision, but it will be communicated. You don't, you don't keep people in uncertainty, especially during this kind of period. So INEC has a lot of work to do. In terms of logistics, what do they need? I don't expect them to be shipping election materials by bus from Abuja to maybe Port Harcourt or they should be using helicopters, they should be using they, there should be some efficiency to this thing. It's it's really disappointing in terms of communication. And while I was coming on my way down here, I saw a kind of like a polling center where it seemed like some of their contractors had arrived there. So I, I, I couldn't understand how, how come. So maybe, information maybe management yeah. for INEC here is poor because Anna Dean was it's, also it's saying soldiers poor. showed up more exactly. like they reported for duty and mm -hmm. not didn't get any signal. Yes, and for Niger State, because FCT, of course, I didn't expect any logistics problem because that should be where everything emanates from. But for somewhere like Niger State, which is close by, I didn't expect them to have issues also. But then it's happened, it's happened. Let's let them be more transparent with what's happening and let them be more. There's, they, I can't think of the excuse of logistics. Yeah, Chuku, we I see what happens it. in advanced climbs now. When there is an accident or an incident that happens, you have feedback almost on an hourly basis from the relevant authorities and agencies. Now, what's also your expectation from INEC this time around in terms of updates? I think that um, INEC should be over and above at this point with information. At, somebody should take full charge of that information conduit. Somebody should push out information on a regular basis, liaise with the newspaper houses, the media houses, steady, constantly. Because the level, for every performance of every, for performance of every government agency is a KPI and a, it's a way of evaluating what the government has done. Mm. Uh, so the government should be very, um, should be very, very interested in the way this goes, because this is an election in which they are also actively involved. And INEC says we want to fight fake news and you're not giving us the information, exactly. even with this exactly. kind of thing. Exactly. Problem. So you leave, you leave a lot, mm. if you leave a lot to the imagination of people, then what you get out there is this kind of rumors and conjectures that come up and people begin to take that as a real news. And that's, that's so very, very sad, because if we look at the, the, real, the, real, you know, the real problem with this whole with this whole postponement, it runs deeper than just this. They need to come up, up and above with information. We need to see them release on, uh, and I mean, hey, at the last elections, 2014, 2015, we saw a very, to, I'm sorry, I, this is the only um, reference we can make in terms of comparison, because that's the earliest we've had. We saw a lot of vibrance in terms of communication. There's a lot of voter education, you know. The ANEC chairman kept on engaging Nigerians on a regular basis. And that's what we need to see at this point. We don't need to see a media shy INEC. We need to see them come out because this mess is already done. So the only way you can bridge that gap is to tell people what's going to happen, what has been happening, what has been shifted, what is being done to remedy this issue. And then, uh, now look at it also. You also need to look at this, um, look at this scenario and say to people, okay, so the logistics is being put in place, and for one week, materials are going to get to places in which they should have gotten to in one or two days. So what is the security measure to? keep those materials safe 
from the hands of people who it shouldn't get to. So those are also areas you need to look at because people will be saying to themselves, okay, so the materials are going to be there four days, a week before time. What if people get their hands on it? So these are issues they need to you know, tackle mm -hmm. and that's, they can only do that by constant communication. They need to engage all and every, every uh, media house that is, um, uh, of course, you just, part of the You just you know, triggered something that I've been you know, marinating on. Um, you know, we, we have been described as a country as a very reactionary and not a, uh, you know, proactive. In other yeah. words, we don't plan, we don't put stop gap mechanisms. We, we're not futuristic to see through and, you know, plan for all of the mishaps that may happen knowing, you know, the peculiarity of our environment and, you know, anything could crop up. Could this also be reflective on INEX planning? Because four years is a long time to, for you to, uh, six hours to the, the day of elections, you know, come out and say, oh, sorry, we're postponing it. Do you think that maybe this is part of our problem, the fact that we're used to the rat race style, in the words mm. of Victor Eshit mandators? We, we don't listen. We, we, we try to do things the same exact way that has failed. Last elections were postponed. Mm. The elections, I think the elections before then, just a, a little postponement also. So we take the same formula that has not worked and we say, okay, this time around, it's going to work. That's, that, that's one of the problems we face. Then the issue of lack of security. If we cannot secure our electoral materials, the sensitive materials, because that's one of the reasons, like he said, that it has to come late because they don't want it to spend two weeks there and nobody knows what will happen. So if we cannot secure, we are not sure that our police, our army can secure this thing, our CBN can secure this thing to make sure nobody touches them, then maybe we need the UN, mm. maybe. Then additionally, there was someone we kept complaining about. We kept complaining about Amina Zakari, Amina Zakari, and she's head of the logistics um, committee. And this was a woman we said, step her down for a bit. Let these elections go on without her. And she's head of logistics, and they are saying it's logistics that caused the whole really? problem. Really? So we're going to blame her now? It's possible. Oh, it's possible. Okay. Any direction? We're going to blame the, the head of logistics. <laughs> so I think the blame goes to the INEC chairman because it's the officer in charge who... who the box stops the, with him. Yes, the yes box, but the box, then the box down the line, there are people, it, it comes up also, there are people that... People say he should resign, but I don't, I, I don't think so. Not right now, but maybe after this election, like we said, they have a lot of questions to answer. They asked for like 200 billion. Now, look at the NYSC core members sleeping on, on the grass, sleeping outside. The people, the same people who are burning PVCs, the same people who are burning card readers and INEX stations just so that elections will not hold at the time. They could go and attack these people just to fulfill their aim. What do we say? So the, the planning is really very uh, already, bad. Uh, uh, if I may, if I may, everybody who could be blamed, and this is a chess game, if you, if you recall, campaigns have been stopped. Mm -hmm. Now, everybody who can be blamed to get whatever votes, because let me be very frank with you, these elections are very, very important to Nigerians. Anybody who could be blamed will be blamed. Because people are already saying, oh, that means the president must be aware before such a thing, before such a postponement can happen. But are you surprised so the, the, by the blame? The blames can come from any direction. But but the, but, but but from the the president's um, um, spokespersons, it seemed like he also took him by surprise mm. somewhat. It I mean, we read tweets from um, um, his followers or his aides, and they're they're all sounding like this. All, this took us all by surprise. How dare you, Inek? This is a period of politics. Even the PDP. So they're playing the, to the, the gallery. Is that the, what you're supposing? What you say? So you think that they're all playing to the gallery? I think this is politics because look, to be quite frank, which even the APC spokesperson, Professor uh, uh, Skiamu, has come out to say, okay, look, um, we don't want any other. We don't. We, I think should be careful. It should be neutral. Mm. You, get, you get what I'm trying to say. So the PDP, PDP is also going to come out and say, uh, um, opposition parties may use this opportunity to 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 play hanky panky. But you know, by and large, that is where I next steps in to disorder this kind of mindset. Well, in the 21st century, the information technology age, wh where you can have experts from anywhere in the world, you know, I know of certain persons when they were trying to run for office, they set up call centers that were digital, you know, they put all kinds of things in place. In fact, they did, um, um, you know, some form of projections. Was all of the money that INEC was asking for, whether money or not, I mean, INEC is a, an election body that should have experts in ICT, in projections and all of that. Couldn't they have foreseen this? Or maybe they don't have these people. I'm just saying. 
why should we be still talking about stuff that we would be talking about in 1993, in 2019? Well, I, I think we talked about making our elections more electronic, more digital. You give me a PVC, it has my biometrics, it has my PIN number, it's like my bank. There's no one that can just um, take a phone and start manipulating mm -hmm. my bank account. There has to be some very, it's, it's very secure, very tight. By now, and we talked about this thing in 2014, going towards 2015. We didn't say for 2015, but we said after 2015 election, we should be thinking of electronic voting. We should be thinking of people sitting around their area in their homes, being able to log in with their PIN and other details and say, okay, I'm voting for, just click on these buttons, click on that button. Unfortunately, it's not done now, and I'm sure they'll talk about it maybe for 2023 and God knows if it will be done. Like I said, in Nigeria, we keep thinking, oh, we did this thing this time, and unfortunately, it didn't work. Maybe next time, if we do the same thing again, it will work. But we should be thinking, since we've come up with this PVC mm. voting, we should be thinking about taking it to another point whereby you don't need to go to this voting center where they have to ship in this paper. I think JAM has, has changed. To a, to a certain point. You don't necessarily have to go the same way you used to go to jam office. You don't need to do all those things. You can go to a center and you know you use your computer or anything and you just easily write your exams. I think we should get to that level instead of where we are right now that you have to mobilize, spend about 200 billion naira mm. and still fail at it. And now let's also look at the movement, the transportation of these uh, materials as well. We know, yes, all of those are mainly done by road transportation. Yes, it's time to do some damage control, but do you think that a hasty move of these um, devices would also affect their performance on Saturday? Because I know for card readers, they are pretty much very sensitive, just a drop and mm -hmm. everything yeah. shakes up. What mm -hmm. do you expect now in the handling from INEC? So that we don't have any other further excuse on Saturday next you, week. I think that INEC, first and foremost, I, even though we may not be privy to their own, their own, infra their own infrastructure or setup, uh, as it comes to such logistics, but I think from the top of my head that they have always relied on CBN to house, to warehouse a lot of their materials. No, but and we CBN, still see CBN, the manual CBN, moving CBN. and then you carry drop. Yes. Yeah. They, they, so now, for those manual movings, they need to find secure locations that are close to these polling units. That's one of, well, that's one of the things that needs to be done, first and foremost. And then secondly, um, some of these manual, mo manual movements are inevitable in the situation we find ourselves, being that maybe some of the locations like the hinterlands, like the riverine areas, you mean some of the river areas, you need to even go with, by boat, speed boat. You, you, you cannot do without you know, moving them in such manner. But be that as it may, um, I, I think that the manner and the way it is done should be carefully done in such a, such a way that uh, you know, it doesn't leave much to be desired. It doesn't leave much to be desired because at the point where we are, Every, it's going to be rush, rush, yes, rush. Yes, everything's going to be rush, rush. Mm. So, so now, now we don't even know. Now, let me. If you recall, when we saw the the U.S. elections, where we we monitored, we saw, we followed it up. You know, we we stayed awake all night by, for instance, um, um, international media, and they were showing us heat maps. Mm. They were showing us, you know, the areas that we we didn't see an INEC, so to say, come into the picture there because they they, they laid back. And they allowed, they give a lot of information out. They allowed the media houses to take charge. So it means that credible information was going to them. And they were controlling the pulse of the people. It is important because it establishes, it further reestablishes the independence of, of INEC. But some people, some pessimists would say that there's nothing like thoroughness in this part of the world. We're never thorough when it comes to stuff like this. And it's a dream that will continue, you know, seeking for it, that it's it's not within us it's without us and hence the reason why we keep making these mistakes again and again and again let me be very is the truth of case that yes there's just there can be two you can't say that there's perfection in a plan but you need to at every point you need to get better aim for it you need to improve mm. we can't get to the point where we're saying Last time we're saying security reasons. At this point, we're seeing logistics reasons. Mm. Oh. Maybe going from bad to worse. <laughs> you, you know, <laughs> no, I don't want to say from bad to worse, but I'm saying it could have been mitigated. Mm. That's what I'm saying. I mean, because in my mindset, you know, we had four years. 
And yes, let's say the budget uh, that was approved it took a bit of time before it was done, but yet still. You still haven't answered my question. Can we ever, is it within us as a, as a people, Nigeria, to be thorough? Yeah, yes. Can we ever be thorough? Yes. Or is yes. it a far reaching thing for us? Yes, it, 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 we can be thorough. To be very frank with you, in we can be thorough. 50 years, maybe? We can yeah. be thorough. And look, Let's look at some of the floodings that have happened in the country. Let me take you, your mind back away from there. I recall the one, there was a flooding in Bayelsa, mm. in Egoa. I, I am I'm privy to the 2012, fact. 2012, I think, 2012, yeah? at the time. It, yeah. was, it, was, it was quite well handled, to be quite frank. It was in terms of the situation we find ourselves in. Because there were call centers that were, that were used to link up to the NEMA officials who were out in the field. This is important. You, we just spoke about call centers in INEC. There's nothing wrong in putting calls. I don't know if they have call centers, but this is the time to show it. You get what I'm trying to say? Some, mm. some, good, media, some good media and information dissemination is important at this mm. point, where you see people actually calling citizens of Nigeria or receiving calls and, you know, sorting out issues, now, giving information. We're about to wrap up conversations, but now what's also your expectation from the part of political parties in ensuring that they keep their calm? We've already had a, some Blame games from the CUPP, the PDP, the APC, pointing fingers here and there. And the call for calm comes at the latter part of their messages. How much should we be pushing for calm this time around? And everybody should just hold on their horses, really. Yes, I, I think everybody is going to be calm because, to be honest with you, some of these parties had projected some of them had projected that there might be a, po a postponement. So it's not as shocking as it was last time. You know, last, last, uh, last elections mm. were very shocking. So I think they had prepared their members. In fact, getting to know about this postponement last night, it came from one of the party people. And I was trying to tell him, no, don't put out this information. If you put it out, it means your own members may just relax, and in case it's fake news, they may not vote. But he said he was confident that they are going to postpone the election. So I think the parties right now, they are, they are, they are calmer than they would have been. Everybody is just waiting. I think they, they will resume um, campaigning, I think. Some of them are even thinking... Anak has not released any official but, statement but, to that Yes, effect. but then it's 48 hours to election day. So, But then <laughs> we have to wait for INEC to make those exactly. announcements. And people are also asking, since elections have been postponed, could they now get their PVCs? within this period. A lot, for, a lot on INEX place, <laughs> exactly. I guess. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, a lot going on, but I think people will be patient and people will wait. I, I think that the first reactions, I, the first reactions of the political parties were not as much as I would have expected. And, and now, I know that every party would want to win as much votes as possible with every situation. Yeah, but, you know, the, the polity as it were, as at yesterday, let's even take one instance, when, we're, when, we're, when people were going to work yesterday, the filling stations, uh, on our way, where we we, we, have, we had a lot of queues, heavy queues. Mm -hmm. So the polity is a bit a bit tensed. You know, there were reports of little, little bit of skirmishes here and there. So everything that you need to do, based on your civic responsibility or your responsibility to the nation, you need to you need to do that with that kind of sense. You need to calm things down. Mm -hmm. At this point, you need to give INEC that benefit of doubt. Yes, disappointment for me from a personal point of view that I was going to go and cast my vote. You get what I'm trying to say. So all my mindset, my mindset 24 hours ago, everything was prepared and you know dusted and done. You get what I'm trying to say. So we need to give. And, and, and the last time, the last time we had this discussion here, I said, look, INEC for me has been has been okay, has been good till now. At least I've seen that kind of improvement. So we take it on their word that this is logistics hiccup and they are going to sort this out, you know. But also, I would have also said that if one week was not going to be enough that would have been the right time to say two weeks. So that we don't get to one week, and you're saying we need another one week. So since they've said one week, that means that they're sure or that this will be enough within time. Within the one week and when elections are holding, we we'll still have a whole lot exactly. of Exactly. So we give them the benefit of doubt. Yeah. The political parties need to be very calm in their statements, what they push out. Thank and, you very much, yeah. Ihechuko Ibeji, our political analyst, who is always ready to comment. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Najib Bele, it's a pleasure speaking Thank with you, you as Thanks well. All right, well, we'll go for a short break, and when we come back, we'll be joined by Felicity Ezerike, who visited an INEC office this morning. She's obviously going to give us uh, a hint or an idea. The first time experience. Yes, yeah, so yeah. ex exactly what happened there. Mm. Uh, I'm guessing some people got there, not knowing that uh, <laughs> the election... Well, yeah, and I would have if we're not 
early exactly. birds that woke yes, up and saw the news. Mm. Mm. We'll be right back after the break. Stay with us.